Now we only have uh, around 10 minutes for uh, your questions. I would like to uh, call on the first uh, three uh, questions uh, that we could have. I guess I would start uh, over here uh, at the back. I think, she, I, I think she was the first one. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, now it works. My name is Merik Jasko. I am from uh, the Danish parliament. I'm a former minister. And um, first allow me to, to express my respect for all the work you do for, for women all over the world and, of course, Africa. Um, I was a bit provoked by the thought of new colonialism. Being from Europe, uh, of course, this hurts me. And so I would like to share a bit because I have been to Africa uh, and I know that there are different countries and I've been to Zimbabwe and Mali and Tunisia and uh, Tanzania and Kenya and Rwanda, a lot of African countries. And I've spoken to a lot of African women. And, and, and my lesson learned from being from a coloni colonialistic uh, uh, society is do no harm allow people to make their own choices. And when I've been to Africa, I've spoken to a lot of women, and some women want this, and some women want that. But I think we should allow them to decide for themselves. And that, is, that includes freely decide over their own body, their own sexuality, when and how many babies they want, if they want contraception, if they want abortion. We don't have to put it on anybody else. So, so if you want to make sure that you don't start a new colonization, make, let people make their own choices, decide over their own body. Thank you very much. Sorry, I'd like to just address, I'd like to address uh, the lady who had spoken, the Danish lady who had spoken about uh, comparing African women not having the right to choose what to do with her body and it being colonization. It's actually quite amazing how you were able to kind of twist that into shape, uh, to, to that thought. But I must say this to you. Um, I am from a tribe called the Igbo tribe in Nigeria. If I tried to translate in my native tongue what it means for a woman to choose what to do with her body, I couldn't. Most of the African native languages don't even have a way of phrasing abortion to mean anything good. Now, as, a com as communities of people and as societies, where it, it actually then becomes colonization, a neo-colonization is that people from the Western world come to Africa and try to give us these kinds of language that we could never translate into our native tongue. They tell us that it actually can mean something for a woman to do something with her body, which isn't really morally uh, bad. But anyway, the first thing that we have to think of and remember is that as communities, which was one thing I highlighted right at the beginning, culturally, most of the African communities actually believe by tradition, by their, their cultural standards, that abortion is a direct attack on human life. So for anybody to convince a woman that abortion is good, Sorry. So I'm sorry. So for anybody to be able to convince any woman in Africa that abortion is actually a good thing and can be a good thing, you first of all have to tell her that what her parents and her grandparents and her ancestors thought her what is actually wrong. You're going to have to tell her that they have always been wrong in their thinking. And that, madam, is colonization. We are, uh, excuse me. we are bound by our contract uh, with the uh, manage, uh, conference management of the UN that we must in at 6 o'clock because there is another event. I would like to give the last uh, 
to Maria the last word among the panelists, and then we will. Uh, I, I believe that Uju's last word was, uh, was absolutely um, um, splendid. I really don't have anything to add to that. Thank you, Uju. Thank you, Dr. Wally, for everything that you do for mothers in Africa and their children.